Okay, so I haven't exactly been active in the FNAF community recently. As a matter of fact, this is my first video in over two months. But to quickly summarize, the FNAF movie happened, which I didn't really talk about. Help Wanted 2 happened, which I didn't really talk about. And meanwhile, Scott has been chatting away on Reddit like he never even retired. Something that really piqued my interest recently was actually one of these posts on Reddit concerning, get this, the canonicity of the books. Now we all know these books, the Fazbear Frights and the Tales from the Peterplex series are canon, but the big theory debate for years has been whether they are specifically canon to the game's timeline. Because if they do take place in the same continuity, it has some pretty large ramifications. It would mean that Afton's not around anymore because his last moments were him sinking in that lake in Fazbear Frights, and it would also mean the focus has now shifted to this unstable mimic AI that is replicating and playing hide and seek with us. And while I would love to just be able to slot in the books into the game's timeline, it does admittedly make things more complicated and there are admittedly some problems, like how the missing children's incident has half a dozen kids, not the classic five, and they aren't exactly missing. So what did Scott have to say about it? Quote, Let me take this opportunity to be as clear as possible. Concerning what people are saying about the canonicity of the books, yes, that is correct. I hope that clears things up. Everyone have a great weekend. End quote. Scott, you dirty dog. You knew this was just going to stir the pot even more, and I'm not even mad at you for it anymore. Here's the thing. It's in our human nature to take this quote and apply it to our own situation without really giving much credit for the other side. It's a confirmation bias. You can use this as an argument for either side so it changes absolutely nothing. But if this post does tell me something, it's, it's that Scott knows. He knows the struggles that the community goes through with these books. He knows there are people who don't read them or can't read them, and he knows half of the community are misinterpreting their nature. And while I thought he must have been frustrated by this, I now think he's just sitting back in his chair, cackling away at us and the chaos he has ensued. It's the scariest part about these books. Oh yeah, and in case this wasn't clear, this comment was just a troll, and you can tell because of his next Reddit post, about Doug in the FNAF movie, where he is suddenly extremely explicit about the novel adaptation not being canon. He knows how to play the community like a fiddle. Fast forward to two or three weeks later, and we hear of a new supposed FNAF game based on the first Fazbear Fright story Into the Pit, and a day later, the trailer is leaked. I feel so sorry for Scott, who seems to have to deal with leaked stuff constantly, but he responded in the nicest way possible, telling us, there's no need to be hush-hush about it. Apparently this has been in the works for a long time and will be a 10th anniversary game. Now, we'll get into the trailer in a minute, but I look at this game and I look at the synopsis and I think of two things. Firstly, the opportunities from here are endless. If this is truly a small indie game retelling the events of Into the Pit, what's to say they won't do the other stories later on? And that leads on to my second point, Scott has said before that he tries to create his games with intent to clear up information from previous games. The biggest lore debate in FNAF history is regarding the book's canonicity, and this could genuinely be the time where that is put to rest. Maybe. All I'm saying is it's definitely looking better for book believers. To add on to that, remember what I said before about that odd inconsistency with the missing children's incident? There's five kids in the games, and there's six in Into the Pit. Well, this game has the potential of clearing all of that up. Think of it as damage control. Maybe when the book said half a dozen kids, he still meant five, but the community took it literally as six. Maybe it was just a mistake because Scott is human. Either way, the description of this game explicitly states there will be five missing children. So I think this could really help to clear up misconceptions and confusion. And if it does, it may give us all a little bit more faith in the canonicity of these books. Let's talk about this game. 
It's being developed by Mega Cat Studios, and we're going to be traveling through time to solve puzzles, gather clues, and outrun the threat chasing us in both universes. And if that sounds like a mystery you want to dive deep into when this game comes out, you may want to get your hands on some of today's sponsor, G Fuel. G Fuel is the market leader in the energy drink industry and they are all about performance. You're going to want to be on your A game when this FNAF game releases because apparently it is packed with easter eggs. And if you've got some G Fuel to hand, it will give you some game changing energy paired with laser focus and get this, it's completely sugar free. I actually drink G Fuel whilst editing my videos for the endurance aspect of it, but it's perfect for gaming and there are over 50 different flavours you can try from. My personal favourite is Hype Sauce, which is a delicious blend of raspberry lemonade. So why don't you try it out right now by going to gfuel.com and using the code OZONEYT for 20% off for your purchase. Thank you so much to G Fuel for sponsoring this video. So in Into the Pit, we'll have to save Oswald's father and five kids' lives, uncovering secrets in fatal minigames and discovering different endings, all packed with easter eggs. Don't know about you, but this sounds amazing to me. Now, don't get me wrong, Ruin was fantastic and Help Wanted 2 was even more fantastic, but I also think that this is a great route for the FNAF games to take because it goes back to that classic indie feel and a lot of what made the series popular in the first place. Secret minigames, endings, and easter eggs. I am so excited about that. Now, about the trailer, first of all, the art is super charming and really impressive. I actually have a lot of faith for this as an adaptation. So, we see an outside shot of Jeff's Pizza, which is canonically the name of the pizzeria after Freddy's was renovated, and is where the time-travelling ball pit resides. Then we get a shot of Spring Bonnie luring us into the back room just like in the book, following the rabbit as Oswald had read in Alice in Wonderland. Speaking of Oswald, we see him come out of a vent into Freddy's in 1985, where there's an arcade ticket eater. So, in the 90s, Chuck E. Cheese started to introduce a machine called a Ticket Muncher, which would essentially use a sensor to count your tickets for you. So, I actually really like this attention to detail already. On the next screen, we have a Basketball Freddy, which is unfortunately a skin that never made it to FNAF AR, rest in peace. We've also got the Paper Pals and a poster of Toy Bonnie on the wall, which is strange but intriguing. Of course, from FNAF 4, we know that these designs date back to 1983, but not sure about the animatronics themselves. Then we have some creepy kids drawings shadowed on the back wall, and I must say attention to detail so far has been pretty phenomenal. These rooms could have been so empty and dull, but they clearly took the time to populate each screen with things that would make us happy. Speaking of which, on the next screen we have a purple coat right next to the employees only door. Hmm. Note that our objective at this point in the game is to follow the creature and notice that in the bottom right hand corner we seem to have a sound or heart monitor or something gives me the impression that we'll need to be somewhat stealthy to get a good ending. So here's the infamous ball pit and this looks like it could be an ominous handprint. But a detail I did notice is it looks like there's a faint mural on the back wall. That is super true to the original source material where the murals of the animatronics from Freddy's was painted over with a thin coat of pale yellow paint. But blobs were still just barely visible. Oswald's dad says, What were you thinking, hiding that nasty old thing? Didn't you hear me calling you? which is taken directly from the book. Then, completely out of nowhere, an amazing jump scare of the creature that's surprisingly terrifying. Like, this pixel art is absolutely nuts, especially looking back at some of the old Atari-style minigames and that 5-pixel midnight motorist mound. In the book, it's actually only Spring Bonnie's arm that comes and grabs the father, but I don't mind this version because the animation is phenomenal. Of course, there are going to be changes between the books and the games. That's how adaptations work. Another cool cameo here is actually Circus Baby in the background. Don't think this really messes up the timeline at all. It just tells us that Circus Babies all happened before the MCI. 
but you can let me know your interpretations in the comments. And then we get such a cool scene, hiding in freaking Golden Freddy of all animatronics. I just love the silhouette of the creature here along with its movement, it's, it's actually really, really scary. And that's it for the trailer for now. It looks like there's going to be a Jeff's Pizza website to tease the game soon with a pretty big variety of pages. I doubt it will be an ARG but it will be really cool to see this come into fruition and maybe we'll even learn more about Jeff's Pizza and when in the modern day this story and game takes place. Anyway, that's all from me for now. Thank you so much for watching, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.